Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'm going to kick this video off discussing Fidelity FX Super Resolution because we actually have a leaked list of games as well as studios which will support this technology. Now, this is not released yet. In fact, it's not going to be available until the 22nd. So this is leaked several days early. And I'm going to go through some of the games here and my thoughts. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of this. So FSR titles which will be supported at launch will be 7. And then there will also be an additional 12 with support coming soon. Uh, courtesy, by the way, to Vegeta on Twitter for this list. Although he seems to have removed it. But videocards.com have snagged it. So courtesy to both. Um, I'll link, of course, both in the video description. So let's start things out with the game's which support this technology at launch. 22 Racing Series, Anno 1800, Evil Genius 2, Godfall, King Shunt, that's a fun one to say, Terminator Resistance, and finally, The Rift Breaker. Hmm. I suppose the biggest game there is probably Godfall, maybe? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be honest, guys, I don't own any of those games. Like, Godfall didn't interest me with the type of title that it is. Maybe I'll pick it up or Terminator Resistance because Terminator Resistance is apparently okay. I mean, I guess I'll pick up at least one of the games just to test out FSR. But yeah, I mean, there's not really a big oh my goodness title there. Fortunately, things do get better for the upcoming games. I won't read out all of these, but a couple of very interesting titles. An eclectic selection, if you will. Baldur's Gate 3. Dota 2. Uh, doesn't that run on a potato? <laughs> that's just quite, kind of funny. Edge of Eternity, Far Cry 6. Okay, that's a pretty that's a pretty big one. Um, obviously, that's an absolutely huge game by Ubisoft. As well as Resident Evil Village. I'm not surprised about this one because obviously Capcom really pushed this as a AMD title. So I'm not surprised. I have to say, and this is my personal opinion, I'm really disappointed that a there's not more games on launch but and this is the bigger one there's no title uh, please correct me if i'm wrong here but there's no title which seems to support both dlss as well as fsr hopefully we get this for say far cry 6 but i'm not holding my breath and it would be absolutely awesome if we did get support for both in one title for obvious reasons right we can actually get an apples to apples comparison I would, however, be quite interested to test out Far Cry 6 with console-like settings and to see how well it does in terms of image quality. We'll go into my thoughts, um, um, additional thoughts rather, in just a moment, but I did want to also quickly go over the game developers as well as publishers which support FSR. Again, there's a decent list here. Um, we have Warner Brothers and Ubisoft. I won't read out all of them because, well, there's so many of them, but... Warner Brothers and Ubisoft are two big ones. We also have Unity as well as Valve. Gearbox, Electronic Arts, which is pretty important because that means Frostbites will support this. And there are some also smaller teams, but quite well respected, such as Bluebell. So the upscaling method is spatial upscaling for AMD's technology. It does not seem to incorporate motion vectors. So this is a little bit different to Epic's technology, which is image upscaling with motion vectors. So I'm going to be very interested again to test out how well these two kind of compare against one another. It'll be very interesting once we kind of have all of the, you know, the open source nature of this means that we could start to do some testing um, with like the Unreal Engine 5 beta, so we could certainly start to see that. I'll be very interested to see how uh, Epic's technology uh, temporal super resolution compares against FSR. Now the benefit of course with AMD's tech compared to Nvidia's is that ironically enough it doesn't even work on a GTX 10 series card for sake of argument. And it does seem that the performance for uh, NVIDIA's cards is fairly decent, although it does seem to work better on AMD's own silicon. This is based upon their own benchmarks, so of course, we'll wait and see how the reality actually kind of, uh, <laughs> how it unfolds. I'm really unsure about FSR. I mean, I'm excited about it, but um, yeah, the list of games is not quite what I was anticipating on launch. It's not a bad list or anything like that, but it's not quite, you know, killer applications. 
The best in terms of upcoming titles is definitely Far Cry 6. And, you know, Risen Evil Village, I, I mean, it depends, I suppose, when Risen Evil Village receives this support. If it's like a couple of weeks, let's say early July, it's not so bad. But if we don't get it until like September, October or something like that, maybe it won't be timed with the DLC for Resident Evil Village. I honestly don't know. It's just speculation on my part. But either way, it's really cool that it's happening. But yeah, let me know your thoughts on this one. I'm excited, but I'm perhaps more excited about how it's going to be in the future rather than how it's going to end up kind of in the shorter term. I also want to throw in a very interesting piece of news, and it concerns ASRock and some discussions that seem to be going on behind the scenes. Specifically, this article is on DigiTimes, so I'll link it in the video description. But basically, ASRock are reporting that while graphics cards sales are still growing very, you know, just insanely at the moment, there is some light at the end of the tunnel. And it really comes down to the fact that, well, GPU demand in China is starting to sink, and so lower prices in graphics cards are expected, and combine that with the LHR cards, the light hash rate cards from NVIDIA. For those who have missed it, China have extended its ban on cryptocurrency mining, and are obviously cracking down just in general on cryptocurrency. So how much of a difference will this actually make? Well, in Q1 2021, one in four graphics cards, or to put it another way, 25% of all cards sold were thought to go to cryptocurrency miners, which is obviously quite a number. It is worth noting, though, that gamers themselves are still very much demanding graphics cards. So it's still going to take a while, even if cryptocurrency mining just completely and utterly disappeared. The fact of the matter is that gamers are just wanting to upgrade their hardware. However, I do think that we are starting to reach the peak at this point. I think things may start to get a lot better. ASRock themselves do only focus, however, on AMD graphics cards, but they believe that GPU shipments are going to start to improve from next month. This, by the way, is what ASRock themselves believe, and this is because of not only increases in terms of capacity, but also the supply of substrates themselves. This is my personal opinion, uh, what is about to follow. But I think, you know, for the next three to four months, things are still going to be quite tight in terms of supply and demand, just for obvious reasons. Because, again, even if cryptocurrency mining just disappeared, you could wave your wand, people no longer bought the cards for cryptocurrency mining, the reality is that there's such a backlog of demand with people wanting to upgrade their cards, and for good reason. Like, if you have, let's say, a Vega 56, which obviously was quite a popular card, a GTX 1070, whatever, most gamers will want to upgrade every couple of generations. The RTX 20 series, for example, or RX 5000 series, they were good cards, but if you had, let's say, a GTX 1080, would you really want to upgrade to, let's say, a 2080? Probably not. But would you want to upgrade to a 3080? Yeah, okay, that's a really good value proposition. And cards like the 3080 are just really short in supply at the moment. I'm going to be absolutely fascinated, though, to see what happens in the next couple of months with supply and demand. I do believe, though, that by the time RDNA 3 and, you know, RTX 40 release, things will be a hell of a lot better. I'll also be rather curious to see what AMD's pricing is for the new AMD Ryzen processors, the 3D Vcash Ryzen processors, such as what we saw in AMD's recent conference. At the end of the day, I expect these to be very much premium kind of products, so I suspect that they are going to be considerably more expensive than, let's say, the 5900X. I'll be interested to see how AMD market these SKUs, whether, let's say, the 5900X and 5950X still exist or whether they are replaced in the stack. Anyway, I think that's just about it for this particular video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey on the video, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.